Hey, how's it going? So this past weekend, we had our first regionals in the new Stellar Crown format and the regional over in Germany, a Japanese player was able to come out on top with Dragapult. So this is really cool. I don't, I know Dragapult was a top contender in the Stellar Crown format, but I don't know if many people had a list like this in mind. And this is also the first year that Japanese players are able to get world invites by playing in American or European regionals. They can either win a regional or top four in IC and get their auto invite. So the first regional Japanese player wins it and gets their world invite. It is pretty cool because it's really hard to get an invite over in Japan. But this list is particularly interesting because there is no Pidgeot. He just opted for the Tatsugiri, the two Rotom and three copies of Dracloak as kind of the consistency package. But really we're just trying to make sure that we get going with this deck. We're trying to win in like two or three turns because two Dragapult attacks and one Dusnor is 650 damage and that can often be enough to take all six prizes. Which of course Dragapult has the attack Phantom Dive, does 200 and we get to spread six damage counters to the bench however we want. And Dusnor can knock itself out. We put 13 damage counters on one of our opponent's Pokemon. And we also have the Alakazam that lets us move two damage counters from one of our opponent's Pokemon to another one of their Pokemon. So we can manipulate damage pretty well with this deck and kind of take really efficient knockouts and set up for huge multi-prize turns. Yeah, we have uh, the Sparkling Crystal, of course, which says our Terra Pokemon's attacks cost one energy less of any type. And we have Crispin for energy acceleration. It lets us grab two different types of energy out of our deck. We attach one to one of our Pokemon and put the other to our hand. And the rest of the deck is just made so it sets up. We got Temple of Sinnoh for Lugia. Legacy energy can be really annoying and so can Mist energy. So yeah, that is the list. Let's get into the games. All right, game one, we got a Mew in the active and we are up against the Loyal 3 deck. Um, yeah, it's not really a common deck. It's kind of cool that I ran into it on the ladder. This guy's like an Arceus League, so it's pretty cool he's playing decks like this. I just start off with my Poffin, and here I'm really debating whether I want to get a Tatsugari or not, because a lot of times Mew means that it's like a Maridon or maybe a Raging Pull. It's often a faster deck when they play a Mew, so I didn't really want to get down just one Dreepy and risk my opponent being able to like prime catcher it up and knock it out and if i got tatsugiri down i would have been able to only get one dreepy so i do just opt for the two dreepy and kind of hope that you know maybe i can top deck something or that next turn i can retreat into a different pokemon and then when they knock it out i can um draw cards with pheasantipity but they do end up judging me anyway and i get into a nest ball which is kind of cool i can grab rotom Retreat my Fez into the Duskull and draw some cards. And yeah, see what they do. They are probably going to want to try and knock out my Pheasantipity or really my Rotom, just any of my two prize Pokemon, I would imagine. And they judge me again. This I see kind of the idea of this deck. They're just trying to like judge spam and put on enough pressure to where you can't win the game. And this second judge definitely did a lot better. I drew all three of the fire energy in the deck and my alakazam which is kind of a wild draw and i don't think that they're going to end up taking a knockout here which i think is smart they're just focusing on setting up their board because they don't want to knock out a one prize pokemon which is kind of useless to them and yeah leave a big a damage two prize pokemon in the active for me to start setting up for a knockout i attach my fire to a different tree piece so now I'm closer to getting an attack than if the, I had two energy on one Pokemon. They could just knock it out and set me back pretty far. So I kind of split my energy. I have the other fire in hand for the other Dreepy. And now I can definitely attack next turn, which is very nice. I could probably rip the Poke Stop and try and draw like a rare candy. Or I can just use my Forest Seal Stone. But... Hopefully they do take the knockout this turn either way. It looks like they're going to. And I'll be able to draw with my Pheasantipity first and see what I get into. And then decide what to forest for after that. Now I draw. I draw a Crispin. That's completely useless to me right now. 
I'd rather get like an Arvin or something. The flip the script was pretty good. I can Dracloak and see what else I get. And I do get Arvin, so I could probably Arvin for a counter catcher here. This deck does play a two copies of counter catcher. So I could bring up one of the Okie dokies and hit into it. Just grab like counter catcher and well, I guess there's no other tool in my deck, but I would thin the tool out if there was still one left in there. And I'm just kind of looking at the resources that I have left right now and thinking I was still like, I don't know. The reason I haven't posted in quite a few days now, I've been really sick and I was pretty sick while I was playing these games. So my brain is just like not working very fast. And it normally doesn't work fast normally, so when I'm not feeling well, it definitely doesn't work fast. I'm just trying to plan out um, my knockouts here. And thinking if I should Alakazam damage over to this um, Okie Dokie in the active, bef like this turn. And I do end up doing that because now next turn I can move one damage counter off of this more peko onto this okie dogie to knock it out and i can pop a dusk nor and put it onto the bench okie dogie and counter catcher up the mew or the petron and take a six prize turn so that's kind of my plan here right now and i don't think that they'll end up knocking out my duskull if they do end up knocking out the duskull though i think i still end up winning this game because they're so they're just going too slow. They need to put more pressure on than that. And they end up, they have to switch their guy out to do the full damage. I don't know, that's kind of questionable. I think uh, they probably should have just done the 130 and then aimed a hit for, for the uh, 260 next turn. Or maybe they're trying to do 260 into a more peko attack. But putting that guy onto the bench just makes my turn a little bit easier, but not fully solved because I don't even want this guy in the active. I want to bring up the Mew or the Petron. And I'm just trying to figure out how I'm going to play this turn out. And if I do have enough stuff to make it happen. And since I did hit the Ultra Ball off the Pokey Stop, I do have enough. I can Luminion for Arvin for Counter Catcher after blowing up the Dust Snort and take my six prize turn. This took me a little too long to figure out for some reason. But yeah, I could put the 130 on this guy. Bench my Luminion, grab Arvin and get Counter Catcher, bring up, I'm going to bring up the Petron and then I can take six prizes in one turn, which is really cool. And I think kind of perfectly what this deck is trying to do, like you don't even realize how fast the damage adds up with Dragapult. It's kind of insane. And I get boss off first prizes, so I could have just done that at the beginning of the turn and won the game. And yeah, knock out the active in the bench and take my remaining four. Pretty cool. All right, this game we are up against Raging Bull. I won the coin flip and chose to go first. And of course, they um, it's up against Raging Bull. So they're going to probably start off with a knockout here, which is pretty unfortunate. It puts a lot of pressure. I know um, Ryu too. I don't know how to pronounce the guy's name that won the regional. He beat quite a few Raging Bolts, so this matchup can't be as bad as it seems. Like, during this game, it seems pretty bad, but I also... This is the first game I played with the deck. I don't think I played it that well. Like, I start off immediately making mistakes. I way overfill my bench here with all four GPs. But my kind of my thought process was that he's going to knock out at least my active. So... I want to have an extra guy in place so I can try and get down two Dracloaks and my Dragapult to draw cards, which um, kind of made sense at the time. I was conscious that if he didn't, if he whiffed a knockout, it would put me in a really awkward spot. And I think that is what ends up happening. So I probably should have just gotten the left one bench spot open and didn't knock out in the fourth Dreepy because just two is enough to get going and I could get the other one down next turn. And I top deck the Luminion to kind of like add insult to injury here. And I really need that to do anything this turn. I think I would need to, um, 
Arvin for rare candy and forest steel stone or vessel and forest. I do end up just popping the uh, the middle evolution guy here. And yeah, bench the Luminion for Arvin. And now I can get the attack off and knock out this active um, Raging Bull and the bench Duskull. That's for some reason I was like super scared of the Duskull, but in hindsight, I don't know that it is like that I need to worry about it all that much. I also spin the Pokestop here to figure out what I want to discard with my um, vessel. I wanted to get more options because I also want to Ultra Ball for another uh, for a middle evolution guy here so that I can be closer to attacking next turn. And I do end up getting rid of the boss and the fire energy. So now I figure I can Night Stretcher back the fire if I really need to. I use the Recon Directive and I'm going to end up grabbing the Dragapult because next turn I, I will want to rack sand so I don't need the Arvin. And yeah, then I just attack, take out the Duskull and the active and take three prizes. I think, I don't know, that seemed correct here because it would le it leaves them with no attackers in play, so I wanted to really get the knockout, but it's Raging Bolt, so I should have just figured that they'd be able to pretty easily get into enough to knock out at least one of my Pokemon. So they don't have the second Ancient per Pokemon down, so they could only solder for one. Which is going to make it pretty hard for them to knock my guy out. I think they do end up using a Prime Catcher here on my Luminion. But that does open up uh, Roxanne for me, which is pretty good. I'm going to end up promoting my Dragapult. Probably benching the Duskull. I don't know, I could Recon Directive and Evolve. I'm not sure which one of those is correct but I do use the recon directive first hit the fire energy so now I can attach evolve getting an attachment down this turn is pretty important because uh yeah I won't be able to attack if they knock out my active unless I attach to him so I got the fire I don't have to use the night stretcher to get the other fire out of the discard yeah we're in a pretty decent spot right now the rock sanded too should make it kind of rough for them to attack. I can put 10 on each Ogre Pond and 4 onto the Raging Bolt. Setting up pretty good math to finish out the game next turn. And of course off the Roxanne they hit Asada. Which their deck is pretty small and they'd only seen one I believe. So that's fair enough. I didn't realize that they only had 11 cards left in deck. Now they use a Switch card here and... This like completely messes me up for some reason. I think that the switch cart completely makes it so that I can't knock them out now off of the bench. First, I don't know why I just couldn't do math. Like I said earlier, I was like pretty sick during these games, like with a bad sinus infection. So not thinking very well. And all I need to do here is Arvin for Night Stretcher, get Alakazam, move one damage counter, from the ogre pond over to the bench guy and i win but in my head i was thinking that i needed to move two damage counters over to this bench raging bolt and i was like oh so i just need to try and get hell <laughs> night stretcher and turo but this deck doesn't even play turo i don't know i end up ionoing and filling my bench so i could still technically win here if i didn't fill my bench but i do not hit the night stretcher off of the your cloak and I don't end up hitting it off of anything else but that's uh irrelevant because I could have just Arvin for it yeah now I put all the damage on the bench guy the bench raging bolt and this is probably when I notice oh all I needed to do was move 10 off of the ogre pond onto the active and they of course get into a vessel which lets them draw plenty of cards but they needed to hit another ancient Pokemon or a third Ogre Pond to win the game. This is, this did look like the top four, I believe, list from Dortmund, which only played Prime Catcher for Gust Effects. 
so I was kind of half thinking that they wouldn't have another way to gust after their prime catcher and they do end up going through their whole deck and just conceding that game was kind of a cluster but I think that kind of shows how Dragapult could have a potentially pretty good matchup or pretty decent matchup into into a Raging Bolt even though if they got the turn one attack they would have won that game yeah, I don't know. I've been thinking about that matchup a lot because I saw that the winner of the regional did play several Raging Bolts and beat all of them that I saw at least. So he must have had some kind of plan or he was just like drawing insane all weekend. I'm not really too sure. But yeah, that is the deck. It is really cool. Um, definitely try it out. It makes Dragapult seem really strong. You can win games really quickly. And it's a lot of fun. So like or dislike, comment and subscribe and have a good one.